This is your city. This is your city wants to know. We want to know the background, the heartbeat of what makes up our beautiful cities. We dig into the backstories from the struggles to the successes of our local entrepreneurs, small business owners, artists, not for profit organizations, and the many, many people who make up the intricate tapestry of our communities. Real people, real stories, by you and for you. But wait, that's not it. I love giving my opinion. Just ask anyone who knows me. We can't get enough of the honest, gritty feedback of places that we spend our hard earned money. I'll give you the good, the bad, and the ugly of the places I eat, sleep, and visit. Disclaimer my opinion, my opinion only. All right, so come on, let's get to it. Hey, all, and thanks for joining in. This is Kim, your host for This Is Your City. In the reviews at the beginning, I had said that I would also be giving my opinion on different places that I visit, where I eat, places I sleep, activities. Well, I'm going to start that today. A few places in the last little while, a couple weeks, maybe a month, if that, you know, that I, I, I want to have some reviews on. So the first one, my daughter is graduating high school, but because of this COVID thing, they're not having a graduation. And so I figured they raised the number to 10. I was going to have some of her close friends over and I have a catered in lunch. And I thought, how cool would it be, if possible, to have a food truck show up at the house? You know, I'm sure they would have to have a, a pre-menu or something and have them order whatever they want. That would be kind of cool. So I started calling around. And because of COVID, there was a lot of them not, not, in, not working right now. They weren't in service. But I did get a hold of one. It's called Blonde Food Truck in Hamilton. I have to tell you, I really don't like giving negative reviews, but as I promised, I was gonna be honest. And I wasn't very pleased right off of the get-go. When I dialed, I went on their website, dialed the number, and I have a pet peeve where customers or companies answer their phone with a simple, hello? Because you don't know if you actually got the right number. Is this actually a company I just called? But that's what I got. I called Blonde Food Truck Company and I got a hello. And it was like a little bit of a pause because I said, um, sorry, is this Blonde Food Truck Company? Yeah. And that's how it started. The gentleman wasn't very helpful. And when I told him that it was only for 10 people, he said, no, not under 75 people. But it wasn't like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, policy states that we don't cater for less than 75 people. That would have been fine because I know a lot of companies that do that. I simply needed to ask the questions, but he really wasn't very helpful. Near the end of the conversation, he got a little bit nicer, gave me a number to call, told me to call somebody named Lael, I believe the name was, but I didn't call because my first interaction with him, it didn't seem like he wanted my business, but I did go on another website called the Dirty South. It's a food truck. It was a complete opposite experience so nice the way they answered the phone was so professional and so inviting and you know the girl she listened to me she understood my issue of not having a minimum of 50 or 75 people and i understood she explained to me they had a minimum as well but um i think her name was nadia and she's the manager she explained to me that there was other options because they also had a catering side so that i could order from them she, she offered to give me different part of the website I can go to and check the menu. You know, it, it turned out we didn't end up going with that menu. It's completely what I wanted. It was very exciting. But it turned out that their catering menu was different than the food truck menu and all the girls for my daughter's graduation party had already decided on the menu. We didn't realize it was a separate menu. So that was just a bit of an issue. But the company themselves, oh my gosh, I'm definitely gonna, gonna try them again um, another day in the future when I have events. But the Dirty South, highly recommend it. They were so polite and so, so awesome. And since I'm into catering, I thought I would give you my, my opinion on some experiences that I've had. 
just last year, 2019, I used a catering company. They're called Genuine Bakery. My, my company that I work for uses them a couple times a year. It's a bigger amount of people, but I've used them twice. I've used them for 40 people and I've used them for 20 people. So nice, so willing to help to offer suggestions if, you know, if you have, if the, if the price is a bit different or if you would like to add or subtract different items that are on that menu, they're so willing to, to work with you through it. And that's a good reason for me to always go back to a company. Sometimes even if I find less expensive, that customer service aspect of it is really important to me they were willing to help their food is delicious and the delivery guy i've had the same delivery guy he's just so friendly so nice the owner of that company super super helpful so genuine bake genuine bakery in hamilton you know check them out go on their website they're extremely helpful you know it usually i'm always kind i'm always kind even if i have a negative comment to make i'll do it in the kindest way i can Sometimes you, you have to state the, the hard truth, but you can do it kind and loving. So last night, my husband and I went out to a restaurant called Barbara Cafe. It's Canada Day. They had specials going on, so we were really excited. We were there the week before, met the owner, Joe. What a super nice guy. His staff is so super nice. Maybe it's because I am in the food industry for so many years of my life, like the bars and restaurants and, and hospitality, tourism. I'm super aware when I go to restaurants, sometimes too much, it drives me nuts. But I find myself always paying attention to the little details. And we got there right away, we were seated, we had reservations, it was so hot. You know, they're friendly, they're nice. But there were a few things that um, I noticed that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It was busy. They had a reservation of a family. You can tell there was a bunch of them. They were taking up quite a few tables. You know, they smoked. And so you're not allowed to smoke in the patio area. And I, I might mention for those of you who don't know with this COVID thing here in Hamilton, the restaurants are not allowed to be open, but the patios are. And so some have extended their patio out into their drive or driveway, like the parking lots, which is kind of cool. So here the patio is sanctioned off. So the people went around outside of that patio area to have their cigarettes. But the thing is, they had it right next to where the sign is to say, please stay here to, and wait to be seated. They were right there. So anybody coming in, and there was a lot of them to use the patio, had to walk through all of those people smoking their cigarettes. That I didn't like. And when we left, um, they had a barbecue, like a charcoal grill that the owner was charcoaling burgers and stuff on outside. And so, you know, those cement things so that your cars park in between those cement blocks. Well, we had to walk on that with that charcoal burner on our left-hand side because the people were smoking on the right-hand side. That I didn't like at all. The, the server who served us, she was very nice. She was very sweet, but she only came to us at the beginning and then at the end. We, we had to call another server to come to us and get us another drink or napkins or whatever it was we needed. But the food was amazing. The portions are huge. The owner, I mean, he was the one telling, telling the girls, look, there's people waiting to be seated. Even if they saw the people waiting, they didn't acknowledge them. I saw one couple standing there for close to five minutes. I know the waitresses saw them because they were cleaning the tables for them to go sit, but they didn't acknowledge. And so the one standing in line had no idea will they get seated? And it was so hot. They were left standing there in the sun. So that's the thing I noticed. And there was a lot of children, which I'm all for families getting together. I love that, especially after all of this time indoors being stuck. But the parents didn't control the kids too much because, you know, they were playing hide and seek right next to our table. And then another table that came in, that's not cool. Running in and out to go to the bathrooms. I was I had to go to the bathroom and I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be such a mess because these little kids are running in and out. But I was thoroughly impressed. They were very clean and they smelt really fresh and, and clean. But so Barber Cafe, will I go back? Absolutely. Would I recommend it? 100%, 100%. Just a few things that I observed, the smoking, 
which I did not appreciate right next to the entrance and the kids running around and the waitress not coming to see us, those things. But it's a great place. I'm going to go back. I might even ask Joe to be on the podcast because he's been in business for so many years. He could probably teach some of the entrepreneurs a few things. So there is some of my reviews. You must go to Barber Cafe. They're awesome. They're in Stony Creek. Uh, Genuine Bakery, recommend them completely. Dirty South Food Truck, recommend them. Blondie Food Truck, I'm not saying I won't recommend them. I'm just telling you my experience with them. It wasn't the greatest at first. So there's a few, and I will be coming at you with some more reviews very soon. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like, follow, click, share, whatever it is you have to do. Make sure you tell people they should be listening to. This is your city. We'll see you next time. Have a great day and be safe.